Well, nobody's had the courage to say this to me before, guys, but I think my dumper needs a bit of work. So, this is what we're doing. We got a 2014 Berkelman's big little dumper, two tons, six foot long, five foot wide. I bought it used. I made a video on that a few days ago. We'll link it right up there. And uh, we're gonna get this thing in the garage right now where it's warm. And we are going to try to pull this entire assembly off of the trailer. And what I mean by that is, it looks like I can just pull that bolt and slide the whole spindle, hub, rim, and tire assembly right off the whole thing. does have a couple of issues but nothing crazy let's have a look here um, these weren't tight when they were using it and because they were going so slow in the fields picking rocks they never really noticed that they were loose until they came right out so we got three missing on that side but the threads look okay and on this side oh slippery we have a lot more damage and the threads are pretty wrecked. So we'll probably just get a new rim and a new hub or else just do that up with uh, with bolts or something, I don't know. Or rotate it slightly and drill new holes. I'll probably just put a new rim on it. I don't want to mess around. What do we need here? Um, jack this side up, I guess. There's a tech tip for you. I guess you don't need to block the wheel you're jacking up off the ground. She runs a little cattywampus. I don't know if you can see that or not. Let's undo that bolt. Get some penetrating oil here. I'm just going to soak it a little bit because this will probably fight me. Oh, wait, what? Well, I'm sure I'll get the bolt out, but I don't know. Oh. This, the end of the spindle is probably <clears throat> rusted pretty good inside this piece of round tube. Like the air one? Nah. Too loud. Air compressor. Oh, spacers. Nice looking spacers. Eh? Yeah. Eh? 
I looked at those tires on the internet to see if I could find them. And I can find lots of four ply tires and they're expensive and these are six ply so I would hate to hate to see what they're worth. I don't know why there's a grease nipple in that location because it would just spread around the whole shaft. Well, but the solid shaft doesn't go all the way back into that piece of round that round pipe as far as that thing as far as that grease nipple. the new post <laughs> but we got it out so yeah that's where that bolt goes through that I took out so let's get this thing cleaned up all right you can see on the shaft how far it pushes into that piece of round stock so we'll uh or into that that cylinder down there that welded welded whatever you want to call it let's uh wire wheel this here That's better. Okay, so now we want to clean out in there as best we can. Try to get this spindle so it just slides in and out of there easy uh, without too much hassle so that I can go park this trailer and then remove the spindle again easily. I don't know if that's gonna work or not, but we'll try it.
expect today. Go away, winter. All right, guys, it's the next day. We're going to uh, pull that cap off and uh, remove the bearing, see if we can get that uh, hub off of the spindle today, and then go to the trailer store, which is fairly close to me, and uh, see if we can get a replacement. Big enough cutter. It's, it's the two ton cotter pin right there. Watch the bearings and fall in. Grease is nice and clean. It is clean? Yeah. yeah. All right, so I did manage to find what I hope to be the correct replacement hub for this. It's not uh, exactly the same. The original one that came with the trailer is round, and this one's more of a star pattern, I guess. Fairly inexpensive. I was actually uh, surprised at how cheap they were. I'll throw the price up and the part numbers and everything there, but they come uh, pre-packed with grease. And uh, this kind doesn't have the wheel bolts. They have the studs already in the hub and it comes with new lug nuts. So I like the price so much, I bought a second one and I'm gonna do the other side as well. So we'll get this camera set up and we will reassemble the first spindle. Hmm. Looks really pitted? Yeah. That's just the part of me open on the side. Yeah. Look at that. All pretty disgusting. Might be hard to get in there now. <laughs> Gross. Okay. Uh, should be able to just push it in from the back, eh? Mm -hmm. In theory. There you go. Crazy. I guess it's the right one, eh? <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> just a burr. Probably just a burr, right? Oh, yeah. I, I got it. Maybe. Are you 
using years of experience to adjust that. How come you then play them? Like it won't tighten anymore? Nope. Just comes tight like... <clears throat> Yeah, but it's not tight. No, like the thread comes tight kind of thing. Yeah, which makes... I don't know. <clears throat> so we're not actually able to tighten that castle nut enough to take all the play out of this. So we're gonna take it back to the store and uh, see what they have to say about that. They can hopefully give us an answer because they're a trailer store and they specialize in this kind of stuff. I'll bring all the old parts with us as well so they can compare numbers on the bearing races and stuff. So we're back from the store with some information. I don't know. They look the same, don't they? Mm, pretty much. Same? Pretty much. I don't feel any discernible difference whatsoever. Try putting them in the other way and see what happens. Mm -hmm. I'll try putting it in and see what happens. <laughs> it's not doing it anymore. Try yeah, seriously, come feel it. With the other one in there. Yep. <clears throat> Just the old washers, all there, one? No, well, uh, yeah, I guess we could take the other one out now. It's totally different, isn't it? Makes no sense. They're just, like, they're just... Oh, I know, that's what barely, I said. absolutely <laughs> barely feel the difference in the washers. So what was happening here is uh, the, new, the new washer that came with the new hub, the, the washer, as we pushed it over the spindle, was contacting an area on the spindle where the diameter was changing. Uh, it was touching a chamfer, so it was coming up hard on the chamfer on the spindle before it was applying any pressure on the bearing. So I used the old washer, and it's the inside diameter of the old washer is just a little bit bigger, so it sits down on the bearing, pushes the bearing up tight before it contacts that, uh, that chamfer on the spindle. So we can probably take this one washer off now. We'll leave the, leave the old one on. That's the new one. <laughs> Try that. That's funny. Not really. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go put this back on the trailer and see if we have a spare tire that we can use for the time being until I get a rim. Didn't bring over any handy seats. Doesn't matter, it's gonna be coming off. Take it off after. Just want to uh, get it. I didn't bring any tools or anything. Well, you just put it on my hand. I 
I would definitely like to uh, push this spindle in all the way so that the tire sits further inside and then put duels on it and it'd be pretty awesome. All right, we got the dump trailer back inside the garage. We're going to uh, go at that second bearing. I'll try to do a better job this time with uh, being a little more descriptive in the details and the steps and that sort of thing. So the first thing we're gonna do is block the wheel we've already done and pull the rim off, jack this thing up. Let's do it. This is a bit of a, a different situation. On a normal trailer, you wouldn't be removing the axle when you would change your wheel hub. You would simply remove this cap, remove the cotter pin underneath, undo the castle nut, remove the washer and the bearing, and the hub would come out along with the races. And then you would reinstall a new hub at that point. Um, the difference here is I want to clean everything up and kind of uh, refresh what's happening down here. I may also think about pushing th this hub all the way into this piece of uh, this piece of round stock here and then using this bolt in that position instead we'll see what that changes um, in terms of the stability of the trailer but I just want to clean everything up I want to get all the rust off of this stuff I want that spindle to move freely inside that receiver on the trailer so we'll uh, spray some uh, penetrating oil all over the place on this thing and uh, Try to get that freed up. So we'll reposition the jack 
We'll support the trailer from underneath this round receiver, this spindle receiver, and uh, that will allow me to get in there again with that drop punch. The, uh, the trailer hitch drawbar that I'm using as a punch works awesome. There we go. It's out. Come on, tell me that little trailer hitch doesn't work good. It's awesome for that. Otherwise I'd be swinging right at that hydraulic mount where that ram attaches. If you don't have a workbench and a vise, I highly suggest it. All right, so the first step is to get a pair of channel lock pliers and remove that dust cap. Channel lock pliers. Next, there's a cotter pin in here. It's bent so that it can't come out. So the end of the cotter pins need to be bent into a straight line so that you can extract the cotter pin. And again, this would be different on a on a style of trailer with a solid axle shaft that went all the way through because you wouldn't be able to rotate this, right? The trailer would be sitting still. It's this part that would rotate. Get a little hammer if you need to. Tap it up. Safety glasses, of course, goes without saying. Once you get it up that far, you can really squeeze on it with these side cutters. And then when you pry, the tip of the side cutters will touch the top of that hub there. And it'll, you can use leverage to pry that right out. And there's your cotter pin, the old one. Now, a lot of times this will be free spinning. Sometimes it'll be tight. You can use the channel locks again to undo it if you need to. So this castle nut acts on the washer pushes on the washer. Now you can come back and forth with this a little bit and that'll expose the rest of the pieces. So there's the washer. The washer acts on the bearing, pushes on the bearing. And there's your bearing. Now, if this was a proper trailer, at this point, you would grab onto the old hub and you would pull it off the end of the spindle. But because the hub is in the vise, we're gonna be grabbing the spindle and pulling it out of the hub. Same thing, just different. 
And same as the other side, that grease doesn't look too bad. It's fairly clean in there. And that's it for this hub. It can go into the scrap metal bin. Okay, we're gonna clean up the end of the spindle, try to remove as much of the old grease as we can. All right, we'll get this camera moved. We'll clean up the rest of this, uh, the rest of the spindle in the wire wheel, just like the other one. I am happy with that. It's a lot better than it was. All right, let's tear into this. I'll open it in front of you guys so you can see exactly what it's all about. This is a complete hub. Bearing already installed, pre-greased, ready to go. dust cap, rubber boot for the center of the dust cap, new washer, castle nut, wheel nuts, cotter pin, and this which I have no idea. Let's look on the uh, box. doesn't specify what this might be for in any of the instructions and it wasn't in the other box. You guys know what that is? Maybe you can tell me in the comments. All right, now that that's secured in the vise, we'll slide our spindle into the rear of the hub. It may push the bearing out a little bit as you slide that spindle in. That's okay. So just for fun, let's once again compare these uh, washers. We'll compare the old washer to the new washer. See if we run into that same problem again with that excessive end play. There's the old one. There's the new one. They look the same. They're so close. It's unbelievable. But you, you can actually feel that the new one has a slightly smaller inside diameter. The hole is not drilled out quite as big in the new one. So I'm not even going to waste my time. I'm just going to put the old one in first, assuming that it's all going to be the same. I'll put the old washer on top of that. You don't have to use the second washer. The reason I use the first or both washers is because if you uh, noticed when we did the first hub with one washer, when you screw this castle nut on all the way, that hole for the cotter pin, was well, was partially outside of that groove, which was not ideal. So by placing the second washer in there, it sets the castle nut out a little further onto the threads, which is okay as long as this castle nut 
as long as all of the threads on the castle nut are being engaged by threads on the spindle, as far as I'm concerned, it's totally fine. I'm especially not concerned about it because this is a, for agricultural purposes or a homeowner type trailer. This thing's never going on the road per se. So hold that still and spin the, turn the spindle or hold the spindle still and turn the castle nut. It all achieves the same thing. I've come up on a burr or something there. So hold your castle nut and keep turning. No end play. Beautiful. That's exactly what you want. So, I'm told that for a, like a highway vehicle, you want these to be slightly, slightly loose because when things get warm, they expand into a position that then tightens things up a little bit. Um, for something that's only ever going to go two miles an hour on the property, I'm not overly concerned about it, but I definitely don't want it to be cranked up tight. So. I think I'm going to leave it right there, and that'll be good enough for me. You, you have to select a position on this castle nut that allows the cotter pin to go through both the castle nut and that locating hole on the end of the spindle. Drop it in there. Bend the bottoms up. I'll turn it so you can see. Grease ready to go. Now these dust caps are they're pretty robust, but you, you do have to hammer them on for the most part. I don't recommend using a steel hammer, I recommend using a rubber mallet. on. These caps can be replaced, like this and this can be replaced with a, another style of a cap with a grease nipple that allows you to uh, add grease to these things easier without having to take the whole unit apart. It's called a bearing buddy. I think that might be like a, a brand specific. There are other manufacturers that do it, but bearing buddy is one that comes to mind. Um, so... Not much to it, eh, guys? It's pretty easy when you have uh, when you buy a unit off the shelf like that that already has um, the one half of the bearing already pressed inside the hub. They're called the bearing races, the actual hardened steel surface that those roller bearings ride on. That's already pressed inside this. You don't have to do that stuff. It's well worth paying a little bit extra money just to get that done, especially uh, in my circumstances where the actual hub needed to be replaced as well. If you're just having to replace bearings, well, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to drive those bearing races out and drive new ones back in. Those are backwards, but it doesn't matter. Um, doesn't matter for the time being. It will matter when I put the wheel back on, or the rim. Uh, so now we're going to move the camera over and we'll clean up the inside of that, uh, that, that spindle receiver on the trailer. Spray something in there just to clean it out a little bit. This one's not nearly as dirty as the other side was.
Another purpose for this receiver. Punch and rag holder. Whatever works, if it works, it's not wrong. For the most part. Somebody won't like that I said that. So you can see the two holes. They're going to engage that hole in the spindle. So this trailer, I guess, was designed to be set up with the spindle in that far or in that far. I'm probably going to put it back the way I had it for now, but I do plan on experimenting with that this summer just to see. Why not, right? I mean, no doubt it would be stronger if that spindle was all the way in, but your trailer is more stable with the wider space between the wheels. I'm going to go clean up this in the, in the wire wheel. Alright, so I w wire wheeled the threads on that and covered it in Never Seize, both on the threads for the nut but also on the, on the unthreaded portion of the bolt so that it won't ever rust inside this thing on me. Now we just have to go back in, line it up. Now, these are not the right bolts for this application. You, you really want a bolt in there that's the exact same size as the spindle and the holes in this receiver so that you don't have any movement. I mean, it wasn't moving before because it was rusted in place, but now that I've freed everything up nicely, that's gonna move. So I will be uh, purchasing the correct bolt for that application and replacing these at some point. Okay, clean off my hands and we'll run that back in with the with the power drill. Well guys, there's your complete tutorial on how to change out a pre-assembled hub and bearing on a trailer. That's pretty much it. The only thing I have left to do is uh, remove the tire and rim off the other side and take it down somewhere where I can uh, source a new rim and get that tire changed over to the new rim and then we'll be ready to go. The trailer will be ready to go. I won't be ready to go because I still don't have hydraulics on the back of my Kubota BX yet. I have to install some rear remotes. So uh, if you enjoyed this video, by all means, come back and hang out with me again. Outdoor content, family stuff, gardening, building, trails, cutting trees down, maintenance, all sorts of stuff. Uh, so until next time, guys, you can follow me on Instagram at Killing It Country. And uh, that's it for me. Take care. See you next time.